our next speaker is uh, uh, Daniel. Uh, so Daniel is uh, an aerospace engineer with a uh, uh, huge passion in, in, in space. Um, Daniel is uh, is uh, presenting two uh, companies today. So it's uh, uh, Solonox uh, and Advanced Rocket Technologies. And he will give us some insights about uh, industry itself and uh, where actually we're going. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. Thank you, Boris. Can you see my screen? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. All good. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Space Tech and Gulf, Alexi and Boris for giving me this opportunity. And, you know, I'm very honored to share the floor with, with such uh, leaders in the industry. My topic is uh, a bit different. It's, we're not going to go into the technologies so we're just going to talk about how emerging space technologies can help socioeconomic development. Uh, I've, my introduction has been given, so I'll just move to the, to the first slide. These are the contents. So space tech past misconceptions versus current realities. So for the developed world, we always thought that space technology is, is for the developed world. That was the myth. But and we also always thought that it's part of the defense industry rather than a civilian platform. And the other the big myth which which we have always been uh, listening to, especially in this part of the world from where I come from, is the high costs for space missions. But moving to the next point is how technology has progressed in this in this domain and how miniaturization and small sat industry has boomed. Has, has given a lot of room for uh, for startups to come into the into the field more civilian opportunities in the field and how we can see and compare the the 1980s for example with the current time and how how you know we can see that only defense projects were up there in space and now we can see university cubesats uh, being being launched into space this is primarily because you know, we have been able to decrease the cost associated to, to, the, to the space development, research and development and launch. And we can easily say that in, in, the, in the modern era, the era we're talking about, uh, space uh, launch research development has, you know, the, the cost has come down. And we can compare it actually to, to football transfers going on, you know, India and China launching missions, which can be compared to uh, uh, Premier League football transfer. So coming to this part of the world, the, the question which has always been uh, asked from me that, you know, how can space economically help someone? And the, the focus of my career and the focus of my presentation today is that how space and actually can, can help in the socioeconomic development. The first thing we would, I'd like to talk about is, is data revolution and how we can have impactful insights into the agricultural industry for disaster management, for environmental conservation, we can see how how uh, the the net zero carbon uh, 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 mitigation effort is going on, and how space technology can help, actually help in that. Uh, it helps with the decision making, uh, the resource allocation, response plans for for disasters, and when we're talking about the agricultural industry, for example, we are able to have enhanced results in form of uh, high crop yield and uh, you know we can have a very strong response to any natural disasters uh, happening in the in the region or whatever we are monitoring about so the results uh, can be uh, you know we can have a, a very strong social uh, aspect attached to uh, space technologies in the data revolution the next slide uh, is about uh, the revolutionizing connectivity and how 5G IoT advancements can happen. So I, I would like to refer again to uh, the presentation by my uh, by my colleague from uh, OQ Technologies. So you you all have a good insight into how uh, 5G IoT ad advancements are taking place. But I would just like to touch base on on, on the topic that space based 5G I IoT networks are fast and have low latency connectivity. So fast data transfer and ensuring real-time applications in the future are, are the standpoints of uh, 5G IoT uh, 
backed by space technology. Satellite-based internet is another emerging uh, technology which we can see uh, SpaceX being very active uh, in, in this domain and global coverage, you know, overcoming terrestrial limitations, uh, remote area connectivity, which where uh, the, the internet connectivity was never possible before. Uh, the applications range from uh, tourism industries to smart cities, autonomous driving, and Industry 4.0, as we've seen in the previous discussion by, by my colleague. This is going to have a very strong impact on transforming industries and closing the digital divide. Another uh, up-and-coming technology, which is very close to my heart, which uh, the, it's harvesting energy beyond Earth, which is space-based solar power. I would like to touch uh, a little bit on space-based solar power. The concept is to have uh, uh, satellites up in space with with the solar. Uh, you know, we can have solar stations up in space, and uh, they are going to transmit. Uh, to the Earth, they're going to be creating electricity uh, by harnessing 24/7 available energy, solar energy up in orbit, transmitting it back to Earth using lasers and microwaves. The advantage is continuous solar energy, independent of weather and time. This global transmission. The challenges for it, for sure are there. It's a very high cost project. It's going to take time to, you know, to uh, to come to that technological ability to be able to have solar-based power stations up in orbit. But you know, I can see a lot of research and development being going on. It is complex, but we're hoping for the best. The environmental impact is huge because, as I discussed before, we want to achieve a net zero carbon emission goal by 2050. So if we're talking about space-based solar power, no fossil fuels being burned, clean, green, and continuous energy, global energy needs can be fulfilled if more uh, if, if the research and development happens in this field and we grow as we've seen other space technologies growing. The other thing I would like to talk about is unlocking extraterrestrial resources, which is also space mining if we uh, if you talk about it asteroids lunar uh, surface uh, other celestial bodies they are rich in in water they're rich in rare earth elements so uh, when we talk about asteroids for example they have a, a lot of asteroids in orbit have rare earth metals which can be mined for tech technological and manufacturing purposes here on earth also you know uh, trying uh, to be able to talk about uh, mining gold for example from from these uh, asteroids and creating a lot of economic activity uh, when talking about the moon there is uh, uh, we, can, we can talk about how life can be supported by mining water from the surface of the moon and how we can pr produce fuel for deep space mission and space exploration. Space tourism is, is an up and coming. Uh, it's, it's, an, it's not an up and coming concept. It's actually been happening uh, in the past few years. You've seen how Virgin Galactic is taking uh, tourists up in space. This can create a lot of economic activity and it has a very, very strong economic side attached to it. Uh, suborbital and orbital flights are planned and uh, tourists are paying hefty money to go and experience how, how life uh, can, uh, can be seen from the orbit and experience microgravity. The current players are, uh, are Virgin Galactic, also uh, from the US. We can talk about uh, Jeff Bezos being very, uh, very much into, into uh, space tourism. Experience, as I've told, uh, in suborbital and orbital flights, you can have a very uh, good look into space and also a very good look into the Earth. It's a small ride right now, but you experience microgravity, and it's it's uh, for, for space enthusiasts, it's it's one hell of an activity. The economic benefits attached, obviously, are, uh, when we're talking about tourism in space, we are uplifting the the aerospace industry. 
uh, we've created jobs from from ticket selling to to manufacturing of these vehicles we're going to be able to create a lot of jobs future vision is actually to uh, you know keep promoting uh, such uh, tourism activities up in space longer term stay, stays in in orbit and also space hotels are being talked about so a lot of uh, social economic development more on the economic side and on the fun side of things i would like to come to how all of uh, these activities can be uh, can have a very strong impact on gcc since we are talking about the gcc right now the region when we talk about uh, technological advancements uh, we are shifting from uh, primarily an oil based uh, economy in the gcc to manufacturing and technological activity going on space technology whenever we talk about space technology we are talking about tens of other modern technologies which get to, uh, which get an uplift because of uh, the activity going on for the space uh, related stuff a lot of international collaboration as we can also see today that uh, a lot of missions can be jointly uh, run a, a lot of research and development can happen with, with the other world that is going to help infrastructure being developed a lot of research centers a lot of uh, r and d institutions now we are also talking about uh, a space port being developed in oman so that's a very good step forward uh, and i've see, uh, and i've seen in the in the previous talks as well that how we can engage the youth in the gcc region by by uplifting the stem domain whenever there is an activity in the stem domain the local uh, the youth likes to come into that domain and play a part uh, when we talk about national pride and soft power space has a very strong face value attached to it and then again we can see how uh, uh, gcc based primarily an oil and gas based economy moving towards technological development can have a very strong impact and for the future uh, the region can become a major space player just a little bit about what i do in the end of this uh, presentation is that uh, i am very motivated to bring about a change in the region i am currently in as been educated in this domain and i want to actually put all my my abilities into making pakistan first of all a space faring nation at solonox private limited we are into a lot of modern technologies we are working with aerospace space defense naval maritime solutions so my my role is to look at a lot of different projects in in every domain especially in the energy domain as well but my main goal is actually making pakistan a space faring nation we are coming up with the commercial space program here in pakistan and uh, we are aiming to position pakistan as a significant contributor to the global space economy my other role is more related to the, to the gcc because uh, i sit on the board at advanced rocket technologies uh, a very strong mandate to ensure and enable that the middle east Uh, is able to launch its own rocket never been done before there is no company currently working in this domain uh, a lot of startups maybe but no one has actually done that and we want to be the first to launch a rocket from uh, the middle east on soil and uh, we are ready to pioneer uh, be the pioneers in this in this domain so the the impact is going to be very strong Uh, with with Pakistan also uh, being part of the global space economy, and the region uh, of the GCC, which we 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 hear for being one of the key players in the in the system in the space economy. So thank you for for listening. And uh, any questions, you can email me, and you know I'm happy to answer at the end of the the show as well. Thank you so much, Daniel. Thank you so much for this presentation.